Gamla Uppsala, Sweden. This small town, 40 miles north of Stockholm, is one of the oldest continuously inhabited sites in Scandinavia. Beneath this church, archaeologists have found what they believe are the remains of a famous temple called Uppsala. According to a 14th century text called the Deeds of Bishops of the Hamburg Church, this ornate temple was built to honor the most powerful Viking gods, Odin, Thor, and Freyr. Frey is the main fertility god of Norse mythology. The rituals that we do have evidence of connected to Frey seem always to be connected to peace and prosperity. So all of these characteristics show him in a relationship with humans that's centered around prosperity and fertility of various types. Freyr was believed to control the weather and was renowned for his diplomatic skills, quieting the feuds among the numerous Viking gods and giants. And in the Viking pantheon, it was a deity named Loki who provoked the most conflict among these gods. Loki is actually not a god, he's a giant who is counted amongst the gods. And at the end of time, he actually leads the dead and the giants against the gods. He's that transgressive character who makes possible all of these conflicts that the gods then have to solve. Without Loki, a lot of the conflicts disappear and you don't have a mythology at all. According to the stories compiled within the books of the Eddas, Loki tries to atone for one of his many acts of mischief by giving Freyr a ship called Skidbladnir. Freyr's ship, Skidbladnir, was the most fine craft that ever was in the water. It could go anywhere at great speed, and then, if he needed it to be small, he could put it in a small pouch to carry it around. Skidbladnir is remarkable because you can fold it up and stick it in your pocket. But when you unfold it, it's one of the greatest Viking ships ever. Uh, it always has a wind, it always has a fair wind, uh, so you don't have to tack. It always gets you where you're going in a, in a hurry. And then once you get it to shore, you don't have to worry about where you're going to stow it. To be able to fold up your boat and put it in your pocket really has to be about the greatest thing that you can imagine if you're a Viking uh, shipbuilder. But could it be that Skidbladnir was not the product of mythic imagination, but was, in fact, an actual spacecraft, one that was witnessed by early Scandinavians? Ancient astronaut theorists say yes, and believe the proof lies in the legends of a race of beings who are believed to have built the magical tools used by the gods. In Norse mythology, the sons of Ivaldi were these dwarves who made these special weapons for Thor and Odin and the other Norse gods. And so here were these dwarves, these gnomes, these small people, they're making these special, very high-tech weapons. The Norse gods are using them. So you have to wonder just who these mini people are. The sons of Ivaldi were the master craftsmen of the gods in the Norse system, and they made each of these special things that are going to be needed by these heroic gods to do their deeds. Might the sons of Ivaldi actually be the engineers behind the building of Skidbladnir, the magical ship used by the Norse god Freyr? If so, who or what were they? Now the question is whether the sons of Ivaldi are real dwarves, the way we know dwarves today, or whether they are somehow more mythical, or whether the label dwarf actually stuck to them because they were somehow smaller. And of course today we quite often describe the grey alien archetype as dwarfish as well, simply because they are smaller. Is it possible that uh, these little people who are making these high-tech weapons were really grey aliens? And because they didn't know how to describe them, they will call them dwarves or little people. 
And these little people are the ones who are making these high-tech weapons for these Norse gods. And it would seem that these weapons are extraterrestrial in nature.